Well, hello again, YouTube. It's Petey Two Finger here with an unboxing video. We've got the uh, the heat gun. This is a m miniature heat gun. It is a dual temperature hand, freestand, extended power cord, aerodynamic design. It costs us eleven dollars from uh, Amazon. And I got to tell you, I looked around at heat guns. A lot of them look similar. This one has a little bit more features to it. It claimed that it's uh, 350 watt as opposed to 300 watt. It's the Heaterizer STH-G35. So this is 50 more watts than the average unit. And it off offers uh, two modes, a high and a low heating setting. Now we use our, heat, our miniature heat gun all the time. We use it constantly. We do a lot of resale shopping, so we like to heat up the price tags. Goodwill uses these price tags that will rip and tear and leave behind some mess. We use naphtha. We have naphtha solvent in small bottles and we'll dispense a little bit of naphtha. We've got like these triangle carpet cutter razor blades that I wrap some masking tape around to make a little grip for it. And those like you'll heat it up and then go in there with that triangle blade and, and remove it. And oftentimes there's a little bit of residue left behind which we'll clean up with the naphtha. Now you have to be careful with naphtha so it's always good to check uh, if you care about the finish of what you're working on. We're not the type of people who care about finish so much, especially if we're buying a used item. So I wanted to uh, do an unboxing on this Heaterizer STH G35. But first we're going to take a look at the back. There's some text on the back. Hey, Donna. Yeah. Heaterizer STH G35 operational instructions. This heat gun is capable of shrinking heat shrink tubing. See, this is what we use it for. Doing modest amounts of solder rework. What, 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 what? And melting things like chocolate mm -hmm, oh. and smallish blocks of crack cocaine. I mean, cheddar cheese. Does it say cheddar cheese? Mandatory safety warning. Do not use this as a curling iron or try it out as a bath toy. <laughs> does it really say that? It really says this. This does not make a good toy for children. It actually says kids. Get that this, off the Christmas list for the kids. Right this kid. does not make a good toy for kids. It would behoove you to keep a close eye on any child who's going to use this heat gun. <laughs> the temperature at the nozzle of this heat gun is around 300C 572F. This means it could potentially cause fires, burns, and other nasty incidents. B careful so when i read that part about that it not making a good bath toy i was like i gotta dang get it. this i got dang it yeah i was just about to jump in the tub and I, I gotta make a video of this so here it is it's a it is sexy it's got a little stand here there's a plastic guard i i mentioned this to my pal jimmy photon and he said he will take his germanium dirt boxes. He builds uh, fuzz boxes for the guitar effect pedals. And they use these old tiny germanium transistors. It's the first element that they use to make transistors before they implemented silicon. And they have a specific distinctive sound. The tonality on the germanium is, is really something different. And Arguably, you can duplicate this with silicon. I, I'm the guy that will tell you, like I built something called the Fjord Fuzz Mjolnir. Now, I believe they have a different model Mjolnir. This was a layout that showed up in the unverified section of the Tag Board Effects forum. And I built it. It, it. I believe it used transistors. I don't think it was an op-amp IC. But it had pink clipping diodes. And I believed it used 2N222, which is a very common silicon transistor. And I got to tell you, that fuzz is very versatile. And it sounds exactly to my ears like a germanium fuzz does. Just like the silicon fuzz factory. If you adjust it at a certain setting, to my ears, there are certain silicon fuzz circuits that sound 
just like the germanium ones. People who want to sell you $350 germanium fuzz pedals will deny this until the sun comes down. I'm here to tell you, I don't buy it. I think the right silicon circuit can match the tonality of a germanium fuzz. Nonetheless, there's people that love it. My pal, uh, Jimmy Photon, is into building germanium fuzzes. And they're temperature sensitive. So on a chilly day, he would take his, his pedal and take this heater and put it on the input jack and blow hot air into the chassis and heat up the transistors to get them into that proper zone of operating operational temperature. So uh, hats off to my pal Jimmy. Oh, and look at this. We, I, I extend when I get these, the, um, we, we've got gone, this is the third one, maybe the fourth. I extend the cables because you need a longer cable on this tool and it comes down. Look, look. Wow. Yeah, isn't that great? So we're gonna, along with our unboxing, we're gonna Okay, this is low. That's high. Ooh, it gets hot. So uh, this is our heat gun, my review of the Heaterizer STHG35. This is the one I would recommend you get. If you're building pedals or you're an electronics guy and you use heat shrink tubing, this is what you want. Yes, you can, you can just use a lighter. Of course you can. I find that the lighter has a tendency to get a little too hot and it melts, uh, it deforms, it, it will put bubbles, it'll weaken, it'll, it'll do all that stuff. Now, if you're really careful, like one tip I would have for you is there's a blue part of the flame and if you utilize just that blue part, it's cooler than the white or, or having the flame below it. So you can kind of get away with that and work up your technique, uh, save yourself 10 bucks. But I really, this is an indispensable tool. And man, this thing is sexy. It just feels really good in my hand, the way that it's shaped ergonomically. And uh, I gotta tell you, this is the one, when this breaks, I'm buying another one. I can't live without my mini heat gun. So I hope you enjoyed that unboxing. I'll talk to you guys soon. We shot some footage at uh, 355, is I guess what we're calling it, this location. The same couple was there with their Pomeranian dogs that we saw yesterday. They came and they were hitting a golf, the dude hits a golf ball and his, his old lady is filming this Pomeranian that was uh, wallowing in the clover. Just the cutest little dogs, but they were eyeing us because we were there yesterday and this is their spot. Now we did wait for them to leave and uh, we ran an extension cord, actually two, from the car. We used our own inverter and that provided a little extra lighting because I have some LED floodlights that I picked up uh, cheap off of AliExpress. So the Noige session was exceptionally good. I I really got off. Now, there was an issue with one of the LFO circuits was acting funky. I'm going to have to do some work on that, and I, I've got some additional work to do tonight. So I'm going to cut you guys loose, but look for these noise videos. They're, this was the best ones I ever did today. Really cool. I, I, I got off so hard on it at a couple points. It was, it was so loud, and it sounded so broken. It sounded like it was going to... At any minute, it was going to uh, cease to operate because I was pushing it so hard. And uh, this outdoor pavilion was just resonating with these frequencies and it was so loud, it was so glorious that I just broke down and lost it. It was absolutely astoundingly amazing. Uh, uh, and I, I just can't believe I built these things. It made that much of a racket. There was an old guy, a Lithuanian guy out with a cane that walked around. And when he came back, he said, music? And I said, no, <laughs> noise. <laughs> All right, you guys, stay warm, hug your pets.
and peace.